Hey, this is Cameron. Welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. Today, we are gonna see what type of pests we've had going on in the orchard and see who's been pilfering my pomegranates. Let's get busy. Right, now one of the things that I love about having an orchard is coming out and picking some nice fresh fruit. You know, lemons and limes and apples and all sorts of things. I love my pomegranates in the fall time. One thing I hate is when I come out though, find a pomegranate, it's been totally eaten. All of these things, we've got pests up here in, in the types of pests that we've got. The usual things, squirrels and birds and rats and uh, opossums and raccoons and all sorts of things. Um, oh, you know one thing that we've got weird up here is koala bears. They love to eat these pomegranates. And so I wanna walk through a few steps and a few ways that you can identify pest damage as well as how to alleviate some of that pest damage. Let's take a look. All right, so think of my jujubes right here. I came out and all of a sudden I saw all these little teeth marks that look like some sort of rodent marks. Now I know some people have birds that eat these jujubes, but I had rodent marks. And that's really what we've got a lot of around here. We've got lots of squirrels and rats. Oh, I see a couple of things, come on. We're gonna go get these guys. Come on, oh, they've gone behind the bush. Look at this. I've got an orchard koala here. You gotta, you gotta wrestle the koala. You gotta wrestle it. You gotta let go of my, let go of my pomegranates, you peel for us. There's one, she's subdued. All right, where's that other one? I swore I saw a, a rat. It's gone off somewhere, I'm not sure where. What, oh, there it is, let's go, come on. There it goes, there it goes. I see it's trying to head it off over here. Oh, uh, come on, you've got to grab it right here. And you've got to, Tickle it right in its ribs. <laughs> when you tickle its ribs, you gotta flip it on its side and get access to its belly button. And definitely get right in its armpit. And the thing just gets subdued. Look, it's got pomegranate juice coming out of its teeth. All right, now we've gotta be really careful because these have teeth that can bite. And a tail, and a tail. Whoa, that was a close one, I almost got nicked. And this tail right here can come whipping up. All right, we're gonna let this one gently go out of the area and I'm going to talk about how to keep some of these pests at bay in your orchard or garden. All right, now we, both of these animals have some chores to do, so we're going to let them go um, very, very carefully. All right, let's go. We're going to release them back into the wild. All right, off you go. Get those chores done. Right, so I can't keep doing that accent for all day because it's making my brain hurt. <laughs> it's fun. Hey, you know that the uh, second biggest audience for the Busy Gardener channel is actually Down Under in Australia. So um, anyway, there's an homage to you guys and the late great Steve Irwin. Um, but seriously, pests in the orchard are one of the most annoying things to have to deal with. There's nothing worse than you've been cultivating and you've been planting this, this tree and this plant for a long time and you come out just when you're about to harvest it, just when they're ready, and you find out that the entire thing has been hollowed out. Talk about heartbreaking. In fact, our pomegranate tree in our front yard test orchard has zero pomegranates left on it. Every single one of them has been pecked out like this. So what we're figuring out is happening is a bird will come and peck the top of it, and then some sort of rodent, we think a rat is coming in and eating all of the insides. Um, and it's just so heartbreaking because we love this stuff. That's what we plant this stuff for, to come and take care of it and to enjoy the fruit of our labor. So, I mean, if you look at the, even this pomegranate here, you can see some of the damage that's happened. You look at the top of this, totally in this, this three pack of pomegranates here. There's still some arrows left in there, but I mean, that's common through the entire, the entire one. This, oh, this is the worst too, because you think it's a decent pomegranate and then you turn it around and find out that it's been chunked. Look at this one from two sides, just smashed in. And so um, a lot of this we're thinking is rodent damage. But if you see how they start, they start with like a, some pecks on the top. And um, like there's a hole, 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 hole. All of these have just holes pecked in. Okay, the first thing I wanna talk about are those pesky little critters, those cunning little mammals, those rats and other rodents. 
Um, rats are something that we just have in this area. I mean, we live in a suburban, but almost a semi-rural area. Uh, all of this used to just be nothing about 40 years ago, and then other than fields and things like that, and then it was lemon groves, um, and then it was houses. And so we have a lot of wildlife that lives around here. Across the street from my house, we saw two bobcats the other night. Really incredible to walk right on my, right six feet from my neighbor's front door. Um, and so rats are some of those things, especially with some of the food sources here. There's obviously an abundant food source. We've got this stuff. We've got our chicken coop that has chicken feed in it. And so it's just a reality. Now that being said, there are some, there's a couple of main ways to get rid of rats. Well, three main ways. One is to get some cats. The problem is we also have coyotes and bobcats. So cats, from personal experience, don't uh, work long-term, unfortunately. Sorry, pumpkin, we miss you, buddy. But uh, the second thing that people will often do is that they will put poison out. They'll have these little things that rats will run in along natural run lines that rats have, and rats will go in and feast on this tasty poison, and then they will go and they will die. Two main problems with that. One is just a purely selfish thing. If you have rats that can make it into your house somehow, they will go into your house and they will die. And then you'll be smelling those rats for a week or however long it takes for a rat to decompose. Really nasty. But the second and more important reason why you shouldn't use a poison is that as those rats are going around, if they get eaten by a larger animal, like a hawk or a bobcat or a coyote or any number of uh, things, your own pet cat or pet dog, there, that poison doesn't magically dissipate once it's eaten by another animal. That poison goes in and now poisons the larger animal. And especially if that larger animal is eating a number of rats and maybe eating a number of poisoned rats. Um, and so that's a real reason to just not use poison. A more humane and a quicker and a, I hate to say a cleaner way to do it um, is using something like a rat trap. And this is what we use in our property. Um, the way they use a rat trap, you're probably familiar with this. There's a paddle here that has, this is kind of a little bit of a more fancy one. This has a larger paddle for them to step on. And so you put some bait on here and a rat smells a tasty peanut butter or whatever it is. And they come over and uh, they step on this. And here we've got these, uh, this is spring loaded. So this little smacking mechanism, whatever it's called, um, this bar, when this is depressed, this flips over and smashes it. Man, that was a lot of force. And so that quickly and humanely just snaps a rat and um, kind of kills it. And then you go around and you check your traps and you just reset them. And um, one easy way to do it is to put bait on it. Another way you can do it um, is to also r know where rats run. And so a lot of times they'll run by the edge of a building. So it, they're not usually gonna be running out in the open. They like running alongside things. And so if you've got them uh, sitting just at the edge of your building where they naturally run with the paddle, they'll step on it and they can just get smacked. I've got that going on with my um, chicken coop. I've got a couple drilled right to it. You might notice this thing and wonder what I'm doing here. Well, the rats, we've got this uh, block wall back there and the rats use it as a highway. And so I just made these little saddles to sit on the top. And that way a rat's gonna go across it. And I uh, haven't caught any on the wall yet, surprisingly, because I've even though I've seen rats on the wall, none have fallen for this yet. Um, so there are a couple of ways I might rotate it and put a second one next to it, I don't know. But alongside the house, um, definitely continue to catch rats on both sides of the house using this method. Okay, so that's what you can do with rats in terms of just keeping the population down and keeping the stuff from decimating everything that you've got. Let's talk about how to deal with birds. So these birds are almost just as bad as the rats. The birds are the ones where they'll come like this beautiful Santa Rosa plum behind me or any of these stone fruit, the cherries, and they'll come in and just before, like a day before you're ready to pick them, these crazy birds will come and you'll see these peck marks ruining these pieces of fruit. And do they eat the entire thing? No, they don't eat the entire thing. They just peck one and ruin it and then jump to the next and ruin it. And so one thing, I, there's really not a way to, and I don't really wanna kill the birds, I just wanna keep them away. And so one thing that you can do is by using something like this bird tape. Um, not sure if it's kind of shimmering in you, it almost looks like a CD type material. And as the wind hits it and as it flutters about, they see movement, they see those things of light hit their eyes, and they generally will stay away because it's, they feel uncertain and unsafe about it. Sometimes you see those um, owls, you know, those little ceramic owls that'll be sitting on something. And the, and the joke with those is that you see those owls covered with bird poop because while they work for a day or two, birds quickly realize that that thing doesn't move, it doesn't do anything, and it turns into a little bird rest and they poop on it. Um, 
So that's one reason why I like using bird tape. Now, thing that I have used in the past um, in some forms was just to tie this stuff on here. And that way when the wind catches it, it kind of makes it flutter around. But that is kind of a little bit of a pain because then you have to come and untie it. And on this Busy Gardener channel, I'm a busy guy. And so we're trying to make this accessible. So um, spending a little bit of time for some system that's more easily movable is what we want to go for. So something that I I'm going to be making and I recommend doing is by um, tying or taping some bird tape onto a pole like this and having maybe a, a strand of it's hanging off two or three places on it and then attaching this piece of conduit down to a longer piece of conduit that's sitting down in like maybe a cemented block or something like that or attach it to wood or however you want to create a base and that way if you've got a T going on up here like this you can just put it up and have maybe a couple of tiers of it maybe have one at about eight feet high and another one at about six feet high so that way you've got a couple of levels and that way once uh, if this tree is about to you know maybe within a week of fruiting or something like that you've got it sitting here not fruiting but of harvest rather and then once you're done with it you just pick it up because you have a cement base or something and you just pick it up and you come over here and you just move it to you know whatever your next convenient spot is and so this way you're going to be able to um, have a mobile unit that's only attending to the trees that you're needing it to protect at any given point. So for birds, this type of thing um, works really well. Sometimes people can, well, they'll hang CDs from their tree. That can work too. Maybe you want to use this. I'll put a link to this, uh, this bird tape in the, in the uh, description in the comments below. So that way you can pick some up if you want. Pretty inexpensive stuff, maybe eight bucks or something like that. So that's one method that I use to kind of keep birds at bay and has worked well in the past. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Busy Gardener. Thanks for indulging my little Australian adventure. And, um, you know, pests are a thing where it is really frustrating when you come and find a pest. There, in addition to the pests we talked about today, um, the birds and the rodents and mammals, uh, you also have uh, bugs like ants and different things like that. And there's some ways that we'll talk about uh, later how to, how to deal with those and attenuate some of those things. But that's just kind of part of the deal, you know. Animals, they're looking to survive and they're looking to find food in, in areas. And when you come into an orchard like this and it's got such plentiful fruit, um, it's kind of hard for them to miss this and just go find seeds in the ground somewhere when they've got a tree full of tasty pomegranates or jujubes or something like that. Just imagine if we love them so much, <laughs> they're gonna love them too. And so, um, anyway, I appreciate you tuning into this episode. Hey, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Busy Gardener channel, if you feel like we've earned your subscription, hit that subscription button, hit the notification bell. I love when you hit likes because that makes me feel oh so good. And uh, hey, whether you've got one little critter eating your stuff in the orchard or 500, till next time, stay busy.